The pace of innovation and reiteration within the custom mechanical keyboards world has been so intense in the last few years that it would be fair to ask how many more interesting ways can you design a keyboard? And it has been fascinating to see designers try to come out with all sorts of crazy ideas for what a custom keyboard can look like, what kind of new materials you can make them with, how many more different ways you can mount plates and PCBs, or how many more knobs and screens you can attach to a board to make them stand out. But today we're looking at a new 65% board where the designers decided to differentiate by focusing all their efforts in one main area, a unique and innovative design, the Percent Studio Platinum PT990. Their new collaboration with ClickClack.io to try to offer experienced custom keyboard buyers something different and original, while still very much grounded on the basics of good design. Stunning looks, classy and elegant lines, and great performance by the insanely demanding standards of luxury custom keyboards in 2024. Hello and welcome to IOSAM. Today we're checking out ClickClack's latest collaboration with Percent Studio, the creators of some of the most iconic custom keyboard designs of the last few years, such as the Canoe, the Skog, and the Trio 65. And this time they're back with another head-turning 65% design that tries to up the ante even further in terms of design, materials, and performance. The Platinum PT990. Starting at $415 for the case, your choice of PCB, plate, and aluminum weight finish, and going up to $520 depending on your choice of steel or copper finish weights. ClickLack is about to close the group buy for the PT990 in January 22nd, and they are limiting the production to 300 units of the normal version, plus 40 units of their $505 Casio edition. As a disclaimer, ClickLack.io sent me this pre-production review unit free of any cost for the sole purpose of this video review. But hopefully you already know by now that this doesn't change anything in my views and opinions about the products I cover in this channel. And as a pre-production unit, you should always be aware that there might be small differences between what you see in this video and what you get in the final retail version, as the designers might improve and adjust certain minor aspects of the product based on the feedback they receive from reviewers and testers. I have no marketing affiliation with ClickClack, but I will leave a link for the PT990's group buy on the video description below. I will also place links for other tools and parts that I use on this video, some of which will have affiliate links that can generate revenue to help support this channel without any additional cost to you if you decide to use them. Starting with the packaging, the kit came packed in a nice and sturdy box with everything safely padded and nicely organized. But here you don't get any niceties such as a carrying case, tools, or a USB cable. Inside the box, you'll find the keyboard shrink wrap with thick plastic film, the non-flex cut PCB and aluminum plate in my copy, a foam kit, and individual bags with bump ons rubber nibs for the plate mounting, stabilizer shims, and screws in multiple sizes. The PT990 is a 65% board with a 6.25 unit space bar, 5 1.25 units modifier keys, and a blocker. So Tengen absolutists might not apply here, since the hot swap only PCB does not offer 7U sized space bars, or 1.5U modifiers, which I'm okay with in this case, since I can see what the designers were going for here. A symmetrical bottom row as much as possible in a 65%, with all modifiers having the same size, which works well with the overall design of this board in my opinion. The lack of 1U keys on the bottom row means we only get two keys between the spacebar and the arrows keys, and that means you don't get an FN key on the bottom row by default, which is a bit of a novelty to me. So it took me some getting used to having it on the right column above the right arrow key, which was no deal breaker to me at the end of the day. But if you insist on having FN key on the bottom row, you can always reassign it through Vile, replacing the right alt or control. As for the fixed layout of this PCB, that means you also don't get the option for win keyless, which I don't care for on a 65%, or split backspace, which I never use outside of my HHKB. But you do get the option for step caps lock, which I appreciate. For PCB, you can choose between solid or flex cut, which I picked the solid for last flex. Oh, in here, hot swap only. So this is where the soldered switches absolutists might not apply. While I will usually go with soldered whenever I have the option, I get it that for most people, hot swap makes more sense. So it also makes sense that designers would go with that for a limited group buy such as this one. The controller here has the expected end key rollover and supports Vile, my favorite keyboard programming interface. ClickLack.io confirmed that this is also VIA compatible, and they provided me with the required JSON file to make that work. But since I prefer VIO anyway, I didn't even bother with VIA. 
The USB-C plug is housed on a daughter board, as you'd expect in this type of design. And it uses a flat cable that will not interfere with the plate's vertical movements and is long enough to avoid snapping it by accident when servicing this board. Stabs are PCB mounted and are not included with the kit. So here I picked some TX stabs for this build. And because the included PCB is 1.2 millimeters thick, they provide you with the stab shims you need if you're using a regular stabilizer kit designed for 1.6 millimeters PCBs. And as it has been the rule for this type of keyboard lately, you get no per key backlighting of any kind here. Just a single LED for caps lock, which is very dim and barely visible through the aluminum plate. If you like mechanical keyboards and DIY electronics, did you know you can design your own keyboard and then have it manufactured for you? Be it a single prototype or hundreds of units for your next group buy, PCBWay can help you throughout this whole process. They offer all the services you need, such as PCB prototyping, manufacturing and assembly, as well as plate and case CNC machining, injection molding or 3D printing. PCBWay is the leading one-stop shop solution that offers you fast turnaround times, all the latest tech in PCB fabrication, an easy to use interface to submit your designs and a team of experts to help you during the whole process. Oh, and remember to check their Mechanical Keyboards shared projects page with dozens of ideas for keyboards and parts you can build for yourself or use as inspiration for your next original design. Check the video description below for more information and for $5 off your first order with PCBWay.com. You have the choice for either FR4 or aluminum plates. No polycarb or any other exotic materials here. So if you like some plate flex, you should go with the FR4 since the alu option will be a bit stiffer, of course. Now, the plate mounting is the interesting part here. They use these fancy beryllium copper leaf springs designed by Owlab for their spring and Link 65 boards. You have eight of these metal springs that come already installed into the bottom case. And while they allow for a lot of plate bounce, luckily they are also responsive enough to give you a very quick rebound, which I do appreciate in this type of springy plate design. Oh, and they also sing. And people still ask me, where's the fun in building your own keyboard? The end result of this mounting system with the alu plate is a board with a lot of bounce, but little to no plate flex, which might or might not be to your liking. Some people prefer plate bounce, some prefer plate flex, some prefer both, and some prefer neither. While I'm not part of the trampoline gang myself, if I have to use a keyboard with a spring system like this, I prefer to have just one, either bounce or flex, but not both. So the end result here was very good for my taste. When I first read the specs for this board, I was a bit worried that the springs could be too soft and that the plate would be excessively bouncy. But luckily for me, no. The springs are strong enough to prevent the plate from sinking too much with normal typing force, which helps me to avoid making typos when typing quickly, given my muscle memory for each key's height. But if you somehow type with hammers for fingers, then yeah, this plate can easily sink at least half a centimeter here, but you will have to really push it hard to make it touch the bottom of the case. Which is a good thing, since having the switch pins touching the metal on the bottom of the case could actuate a bunch of other keys since their switch pins would short. The PT990 case is CNC'd aluminum and it is a wild combination of lines and slim curves. It is a thing of beauty, really. It has this very subtle retro art deco style that reminds me of kitchen appliances from the 40s and 50s. And the design here is not only form, it is also functional, as in the case of the sculpted lines on the sides that serve as handles for you to lift this heavy board. All outside edges have these perfectly milled chamfers that look incredibly smooth and don't feel sharp to the touch. I cannot even start to imagine how much more complex it is to mill something like this in comparison with a more traditional wedge design keyboard with straighter lines. The amount of time that something like this takes to finish on a CNC machine might be insane. If you want to know where most of the money you're paying for a keyboard like this is going, this is it. And while I know some of you out there don't like visible screws, I don't have that problem, especially when they are on the bottom. Besides, I think if well implemented, visible screws can actually work well with the design which I believe to be the case here. The anodization process is flawless. I could not find a single speck or dimple anywhere outside or inside. ClickClack is offering nine different colors for the PT990, seven anodized and two coated, and they all look tasteful in my opinion. The ice anodized color I have here is absolutely stunning. It has a very subtle blue tint that can dip into silver depending on the lighting. The other nice thing about their anodization is that it does not show fingerprints, which is great to keep the board looking clean at all times. 
and which is not the case with the stainless steel PVD finish I got here, which while it looks amazing, is a dust and fingerprints magnet, of course, so it is not very practical. Unless you intend to keep this in a single location and only white glove it around, you'd be better off with one of the matte options, such as brushed steel or sandblasted brass, which while less visually striking, will be far more practical for day-to-day -day use. If you go with the steel or copper bottoms, that will also significantly increase the weight of the board, of course. The case design here is very intricate, with the daughter board hidden between the weight piece and the bottom half of the case. You also have three different badges, one in the bottom with the model number, one on the inside with the Percent Studios logo, and a small one on the left side of the top case with the word Platinum. Luckily, the bottom case comes fully assembled, with all the leaf springs, weights, badges and daughter board already in place, so there's no need to fuss about with those things if you don't want to. The one thing I was not a fan on this case design was the number of different types of screws they used here. There's one type for the weights, two types for attaching the spacers to the PCB and the plate, and another type to attach the two halves of the case together. And that's a lot of screw types, especially considering the kit doesn't come with any tools. So here you better have a decent multi-bit screwdriver set with double zero Phillips, as well as 1.3, 1.5, and two millimeter hex bits. Another thing I don't understand why they didn't include was integrated force brake pads into the case, such as those in the much cheaper TKD Cycle 7, for example. So here you'll have to DIY your own force brakes if you care about that. The case measures 34 centimeters in width, which is quite chunky for a 65%, 11.5 centimeters in depth, 2 centimeters in height in the front side, and 3.6 centimeters in the back. Both measurements there already include the height of the bump arms. The inclination angle is 8.5 degrees when measured on the edge of the case. It weighs shy of 2.3 kilograms, or 5 pounds with its stainless steel weight and fully built with alu plate and ABS keycaps. Needless to say, this thing is not going to move on your desk. The PT990 comes with a complete foam kit in the box with a foam sheet for the bottom case, a thick porn sheet for the plate, and a PE sheet for the PCB. The use of these is always optional, of course, and should be used according to your own preferences. In this video, we are going to try it with and without case foam. And because I used quite loud long pole switches already, I did not use the PE foam. But because these switches have no spring ping of any kind, I figured it would be okay to skip the plate foam here. Always good to remind that using the case foam will also help to avoid shorting switches and accidentally actuating them in the rare case you push the plate all the way down. ClickLack.io does not have a warranty policy explicitly defined on their website, but they are known for taking good care of their customers on a case-by-case -case basis. So if any problem arises with your board, just let them know by email what the issue is with photos or videos of the problem, and they should be able to take care of the issue for you. As this is a custom kit, let's quickly go through my choices of switches and keycaps. For switches, I decided to finally put these treasured Preveo Nebulas in a worthy host. Yeah, I know, it was pretty sad to lose Preveo keys. I bought a lot of stuff from them back in the day, and these switches were the last of my purchases before they closed shop. These might be one of the best looking switches I've ever seen, and they perform extremely well. These are long pole linears made by JWK with 62 grams of bottom out force and they come with perfect factory lubing and zero ping of any kind. They feel and sound amazing for clackier builds such as the one I'm going for here. For keycaps, I picked the classic GMK Space Cadet Round 2, with its beautiful dark gray alphas, indigo blue mods, and white legends. Since I was going for clacks here, thick GMK ABS was the way to go. Not to mention that I think the color scheme here worked very well with the ice color of the PT990. Super classy. To assemble the hot swap PT990, I first prepped the stabs by lubing them with my mix of 5050 Crytox 205 Grade 2 and 105 oil on the stems and housings, and XHT BDZ on the wires. Instead of the provided shims, I used KBD Fan's rubber adhesives for stabs that has the same thickness of the shims with the advantage of helping to quiet down the stabs, which I like. TX tabs are a known quantity at this stage, basically the best tabs in the business today. Here I went with their screw in version, designed specifically for long pole switches, which helps to mitigate potential rattling caused by the slightly higher position of the keycaps. After installing the tabs, it was time to break these support wings that come on the long sides of the PCB, which is quite annoying if you ask me. I wish Percent would put the PCB with these things pre-clipped in the box, to avoid any confusion for the first-time builders that might not know these things are supposed to be removed. 
Then I installed the rubber nibs to the plate and then the spacers to the PCB and plate assembly with the smaller hex screws on the PCB side and with the Phillips ones on the plate side. And then it was time to plug the daughter board to the PCB, which is a rather tricky endeavor given the microscopic size of the connector. Then installing all the switches. Before closing the case, I also placed some small pieces of self-fusing silicon tape as a force brake mod near the eight screw holes to reduce resonance. The next step was to place the PCB and plate assembly on top of the bottom case half, lining up the rubber nibs with the small holes on each of the eight leaf springs. Then I placed the top case half and attached the eight long hex screws with my wall stick. And finally, the keycaps. And there we have it, a stunning piece of art in the shape of a keyboard. And now to the good stuff. How does it sound? Let's hear the Hot Swap PT990 with its stainless steel weight, aluminum plate, Prevail Nebula switches, TX tabs, and GMK keycaps. In this sound test, you hear the board without any plate foam, but with and without the force brake mod, as well as with and without case foam. First off, all configurations sounded very nice to my ears. Sure, the force brake mod does make a small difference, but even the stock board still sounds very good, which is a testament to the quality of this design and shows how well this board was tuned for sound from its inception. With these clacky JWK switches, the sound is crisp, balanced and well-defined with no harshness on the top frequency range. With the force brake mod, we get a smidge less metal resonance, which helps, of course. And with the case foam, while we get no difference in volume, the high frequency gets slightly rolled off. But honestly, the differences here are so small to the point of being hard to notice unless you're actively looking for them. Whatever way you go here, you'll have a nice and crisp sounding keyboard. All right, conclusion time. What do I think of the Percent Studio Platinum PT990? For the layout, I liked it. Despite the lack of choice on the buyer's end, I think the Percent team luckily made all the right ones here, both in terms of aesthetics and usability. And what can I say about the looks? This thing is jaw-dropping gorgeous. The best looking 65% I have ever typed on beyond any doubt. I'm a bit of a sucker for Art Deco designs and this board hit all the right spots for me. Beautiful lines with a practical and functional shape. While I usually tame the sound of my keyboards for use in open offices, here, I went all in for the louder and sharper clacks with this configuration, since this board would not leave my home office anyway. And I gotta say, I love its sound. While the force brake mod does help, I'd still have no problem using this board in its stock configuration without foam. As for typing feel, if you've watched any of my videos before, you might know I'm not exactly crazy about excessive plate flex and bounce. But here I was positively surprised with how responsive this lift spring mounting system is. While it can give a lot of plate bounce if you hammer it down, for my light typing style, the plate bounce did not get in the way at all. 
which was unexpected but appreciated. The PT990 is a luxury custom board and one with a clicklag.io track record. Top-notch design, the best materials, and flawless manufacturing. But then again, this is a $415 kit before you factor in shipping in Texas and before you add in stabs, switches, and keycaps, which in my case added up another $220, which makes this easily a $700 build. So yeah, this better be damn good. And it is. But this is the kind of product that no one can claim that is needed, really. The same way no one needs to drive a Porsche 911 to commute to work every day. But it is obviously nice to be able to do so if you can afford one, right? It is always a bit of a moot point to discuss competition with luxury customs like this. While you could claim that this or that other keyboard could be better than this for a bit less money, it is very likely that the keyboards you'll be comparing this to are also group buys that you can't just go out there buy whenever you want one. Having said that, from everything I've seen out there between four and $500, I don't think you're overpaying here really. The custom keyboards market is filled with boards that cost more than this without offering the same level of design or finish. So if you like the layout, the looks, and if this board falls within your budget for an ultra premium 65%, then I have no qualms in recommending this as your next custom keyboard. Now, it is always good to remember that this is a group buy, which comes with all the usual disclaimers, right? You're paying up front and you only get your product months later. And then in the particular case of the PT990, there's also an elephant in the room here that also needs to be addressed. And that is the rather checkered past of Percent Studio in regards to their past group buys. There is a long list of complaints online from people who bought their boards through other vendors in the past and had a less than stellar customer service experience, including some fairly notable content creators in this space. But, and this is an important but, this time the group buy is being managed by clicklack.io. And Clicklack's reputation as a vendor is basically as good as it gets. So sure, some people might not want to support Percent Studio's work here as a matter of principle, and I totally understand that. But if you're not one of them, then at least you might rest assured that with Clicklack handling the business side of things here, the risks are far smaller for you as the buyer. And finally, who do I think the PT990 is recommended for? Prices and group buy issues notwithstanding, this is a 100% enthusiast keyboard, of course. And while the hot swap PCB here might give you the impression that this would be a beginner's friendly custom, eh, I have to say that at least as this kit arrived to me, it isn't really. Not only you don't get a built-in guide from the manufacturer, but if you have never built a ultra premium custom before, there will be a few things that will leave you scratching your head when you try to put it together. The PCB that needs to be clipped, the multitude of different types of screws, the lack of tools in the box, and the rather finicky daughter board cable are relatively significant obstacles for a first-time keyboard builder here. So you should definitely consider these aspects before you pull your credit card out. Now, if this is not your first custom build, then yeah, I don't think there's anything here that will necessarily stop you on your tracks. And the reward here is definitely worth it. This is one of the most unique 65% I have ever tried. From looks to build quality and performance, typing on this thing is quite the experience. And now, of course, I throw it back to you. What do you think? Are the design features and prices of the Platinum PT990 enough to pull you in? Let me know in the comments below. And while in there, leave any questions and as always, I'll be happy to help. Links for the PT990 Group Buy and everything else are in the video description below as usual. And if you want to check my review of the other clicklack.io hit, the insanely competitively priced TKD Cycle 7, click here. Or click here if you want to check out my previous video where I share a bit of my personal history with mechanical keyboards and then go on to mod my first modern board. Thanks for watching and see you all soon.